Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. I really have, I'm, I'm loving this series because it is so important that we really do stay focused in the times of, of trouble, in the times of stress. We need to stay focused on God. The Bible says that God has promised to meet all of your needs. And that, that literally is all. Emotional needs, financial needs, physical needs, spiritual needs, relational needs. He promises to meet every need that you have, every need that comes up in your life. So why is it that you could look around and see people who it, it seems like their needs are not getting met? Maybe that's you. Maybe you're thinking, well, my needs aren't getting met. Why is it? What's the problem? Why is it that sometimes someone need, someone's needs go unmet? Well, the Bible says that there is a certain factor involved in it. You know, you might think, well, you know, that's just God not meeting my needs. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says there is a faith factor involved in God meeting your needs. It's a fact that you trust him and then he meets your needs. See, faith is really the, the thing that we're focusing in on today that we need to stay focused on. And I wanna to explain to you why, because faith is it's an interesting substance. It's like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. The less you use it, the more it goes into atrophy and gets weaker and weaker. And that's what faith is like. The more you use faith, the stronger it gets. And the stronger your faith gets, the more God blesses your life. The Bible refers to the circumstances that we face, whether it's financial, physical, relational, whatever circumstance we face, the Bible says that God uses that to stretch our faith, to grow our faith, to build our faith. And it actually says he builds our faith through trials. The Bible refers to the circumstances that, that God uses to stretch our faith as trials. For example, it says these trials, you could say these circumstances, are only to test your faith, to show that it is strong and pure. So today, I wanna walk with you. I wanna talk with you about four common trials, four common trials that we will face and we face them again and again. We experience these. And along with each one, I wanna give you a question you can ask to evaluate yourself, to see where you're at in the midst of these. So in your life, you will go through these four tests over and over. They cover the four main areas that you experience in life. And when you go with, through them, you could know, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for me to develop my faith, to trust God more so I could be closer to God so he could bless my life, so I could be a blessing to others, an encouragement to others. So let's talk about these four tests. First one, the pressure test. The pressure test is the question, how will I handle stress? Will I depend on myself or will I depend on God? Will I turn to other things or will I turn to God? There's always a choice and it's always a test. Are you gonna turn to God? or to something else. In Psalm 50, the Bible says, I want you to trust me in your times of trouble so I could rescue you and give you my glory. God is saying, I want you to turn to me when you're in trouble, not to other things. But do we do that? Do we turn to God first? Do you, when you face a trouble, do you turn to God first? I think we usually turn to other things. We get a little bit of stress and we want some stress relief. And so we turn to other things rather than turning to God. And I actually think we all have our own little go-tos. We all have, we get under stress and we have our own personal go-to. You know, when I get under stress, I know what I need. Some of you would say, you know, yeah, I know what I need. I'll go to my medicine cabinet, I'll pull out one of those little pills and I'll take the pill and oh, that will relieve my stress. Somebody else will say, I know what I'll do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call a friend and complain to them about my stress. So you call them up and you complain and as you complain, you begin to, to feel a little bit of release from it. But as soon as you're off the phone, it, it starts coming right back into your life. Someone will say, I know what I'll do. 
I'll have a beer. I'll have a nice little glass of wine. And you drink it and you feel some relief, but as soon as the effects of that alcohol wear off, you're back to feeling stress again. Somebody else will say, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bake something. (laughs) And when you do, call me. (laughs) I will enjoy that with you. I'll bake some cookies, I'll bake a cake, and I'll eat it. And I'll eat all of it. And I'll feel good in the process. Somebody else will say, I know what I'm gonna do. I'll go shopping. Anybody wanna go shopping? You know, when going gets tough, what do the tough do? They go shopping. Or someone will say, I know what I'll do. I'm gonna watch a TV and I'm gonna escape into one of those characters, into one of those stories. I'm gonna go to the movies. It's it's the way that I escape and feel a sense of, of, of relief. See, we all have our own little stress relievers. And somewhere down that list is God. The problem is that he's somewhere down the list. And we go through our other items on our list before we get to God. You have legitimate needs. We all do. You have legitimate needs in your life that need to get met. The problem is you're most often impatient. You get in a hurry. And if God doesn't instantly meet your need, you make up your own plan to meet your need. And you go after getting your need met. We do this all of the time. We short circuit God's work in our lives. We short circuit God's blessing in our lives by going for the quick fix, the cheap thrill, the instant hit, the quick relief. A little temporary fix is what I need. We do it all the time. We don't wait for God's will in our lives. We take matters into our own hands and we do what we think we need to do. But we don't get down to God and God is what we need. Here's a story, relates to this issue for me. Jeremiah 2.13 says, my people have done two evils. They have turned away from me, the spring of living water, and they've dug their own wells which are broken wells that cannot hold water. He says they've done two evils. They've done two things. One, they turned away from God. And two, they tried to meet their own needs. We we do the same thing. We get a little stressed, we get a little concerned, and we dig our own wells. We dig our own holes. And the hole we dig is broken. It doesn't hold water, it's cracked. It doesn't meet our needs. We create our own emotional pressure or financial pressure or relational pressure and we go out and we dig a well. We dig a hole and our holes don't hold water and so they don't meet our needs. So what's the solution? In Isaiah 50, 15, it says this. If you are walking in darkness, if you are confused, if you are struggling, if you can't see your way through, if you are walking in darkness, Without a ray of light, trust in the Lord and rely on your God. The solution is trust in the Lord and rely on God. When you are under stress, are you turning to God or are you turning to other things? And where you turn will determine what happens next in life. It's simply a test. It's the pressure test. And the correct answer is trust in the Lord and rely on God. Second test we face, the people test. God often uses people in your life to to stretch you, to, to develop your faith. The people test question is, how will I handle disappointment? Because life is disappointing. It's often disappointing. Things don't turn out the way you planned. Careers don't turn out the way you planned. Marriages don't turn out the way you planned. Kids don't turn out the way you planned. Plans don't turn out the way you planned. See, the fact is life is disappointing a lot of the time. And some of those disappointments are related to people, the people around you. So why do we get so disappointed by people in life? We get disappointed when we expect our people to meet our needs. That's when we get disappointed. When you turn to someone 
expecting them to meet your needs, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. You, you, you put an expectation on them that they can't fill. And when they don't fill it, you know what you think. What is wrong with you? You're not meeting my need. Your problem is not the people in your life. Your problem is your response to the people in your life. People are not the problem and they're not the answer either. The answer to your insecurity is not another person. The answer to your inferiority is not another person. The answer to your worries is not another person. The answer to your fears is not another person. The answer to your depression is not another person. The answer to your discouragement is not another per person. The answer to your sense of failure is not another person. The answer to your dissatisfaction in life is not another person. The answer to all of your issues is God. God is the answer, not another person. When you expect other people to meet your needs, to be your savior in the moment, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. In Isaiah 2.22, it says, you should stop trusting in people to save you because people are only human. Don't expect a person to be the answer to all of your problems. If you do, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Jeremiah 17, seven says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made him their hope and confidence. Make him your hope and confidence and you will experience life in the midst of that. And what happens if you actually put God first in your life? What happens if you trust God? The Bible says, anyone who trusts in me will not be disappointed. If you don't want to be disappointed, then change your focus and put your focus on God. Trust in the Lord and you will not be disappointed. Do you know why you're disappointed? It's, it's, it's because you're probably trusting other things. You're going to other things rather than going to God. You, know, you may have thought, this experience, this will make me happy. And it didn't. So you're disappointed. This person will make, my, make me happy. This person will meet my needs. And they didn't, so you're disappointed. It's as if we're saying this person, this experience, this event, this thing, this will meet my needs. This will make my ha me happy. But anytime you go there, you find disappointment because your needs aren't met. This is a test. It's the people test. Are you gonna handle disappointment by complaining? What are you gonna do with it? Or are you gonna accept that God knows what's best for you? God has a beautiful plan for you and that God loves you. And he knows what you need better than you do. And he will meet your needs when you trust him. So are you gonna trust God with the things that disappoint you? The Bible says, anyone who trusts in God will not be disappointed. And then there's another test, the persistence test. The question for the persistence test is, will I keep my commitments? If you're gonna develop maturity, you have to learn to make and keep commitments. You make them and then you also keep them. The hallmark of emotional and spiritual maturity is that you make and keep wise commitments. You do the things that you say you're going to do. Immaturity shows up in the inability to make and keep wise commitments. I imagine that some of you are in the commitment test right now. You've made some choices, you know the right thing to do, but then you, know, you struggle with it. Am I going to do this or am I gonna do what other people do? It's simply a test. It's a test of your character. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, if you make a promise to God, don't be slow to keep it. God is not happy with fools. So give God what you promised. Have you made any commitments to God that you failed to follow through on? Have you, have you sit in here one Sunday and heard the message of God's truth and said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. 
God, I will do this. This is my next step. But as you look back, you still haven't done anything about it. You're not doing what you said you would do. And God hears that. If you make a promise to God, don't be slow to keep it. In Ecclesiastes 8, 5, the wise man will find a time and a way to do what he says. It, it, it's saying that the wise person figures out a way to keep their commitments, to do what they say. The weak person says, yeah, I, I, I made a commitment, but I'm just gonna blow that off. I'm not gonna do that. I made that commitment back then, but I'm not gonna follow through with it today. Weak people give excuses. Wise people find the time and the way to do what they say. Again, this is a test. It's a test of your character and it's a test of your faith. Fourth test is the priorities test. The priorities question is, what will be first in my life? What would be first? One of the greatest promises in the Bible that it actually, it deals with this test. The Bible says, your heavenly father already knows all your needs and he will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. You have legitimate needs in your life. You do, they're legitimate. You have financial needs, you have emotional needs, you have mental needs, you have relational needs, you have physical needs, you have spiritual needs. Those are legitimate needs and God promises to meet every one of them if you put him first in your life. If you put him first, he will meet your needs. You know, I could say, or you could say, Jesus is first place in my life. Really saying that really means so little. It, also, it almost means nothing. It's easy to say, God is first in my life. We could all buy t-shirts that say, God is number one. But that really isn't of that much value because it's not about what we say, it's about what we do, how we live life. How do you know if God is really the first priority in your life? I'm gonna give you a couple of questions you could ask. I'll give you three questions you could ask yourself to determine if God is first. First question is, where do my thoughts go first? When I have free time, what does my mind wander off to and spend its time thinking about? Whatever it is, that's the most important thing in your life because that's what you think about. Another question is, where does my money go? The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Where your money goes, it reveals your priorities. Third question is, where do I spend my time? The way you spend your time, the way you spend your money, the way you spend your thoughts, that really does reveal what's really most important in your life. My thoughts, my money, my time. Now to these four tests, which of these four tests are you going through right now? Are you right now going through the pressure test? Is God seeing you turn to him or are you turning to someone or something else in this time of stress? Next question is, are you going through the people test? How are you handling your disappointments? Are you complaining about them? Or are you realizing that God is there and will meet your needs? If you trust him, he will take care of you. Are you going through the persistence test? Are you keeping your commitments? Are you keeping the commitments that you made to people or to God? Are you going through the priorities test? Are you going through the test to, de to determine what is first place in your life, to determine what is most important in your life? And are you living out of what you say is most important. Now, some of you would probably say, you know, I haven't been doing very well on this test. What do I do if I haven't been doing very well with the tests of life? Well, listen to this. The book of Isaiah, this is what God says. If you come back to me and trust me, you will be saved and you will be strong. Two things in this verse, salvation and strength. You will be saved and you will be strong. 
God is saying, if you come back to me, I will save you and I will give you strength. And that's what we need. We need salvation and strength. God promises to do that for us. So not only that, but look at this verse, James 1.12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When you depend on God when you're under stress, when you trust God when you're disappointed, when you keep your commitments even when it's hard, when you put God first in your thoughts, in your money, in your time, God says two things. One, I will meet your needs. And two, I will bless your life. That's who God is. That's why we need to stay focused on God and on living by faith. Getting your needs met is something God promises and there is a faith factor involved. Where do I put my faith? Where do I put my trust? In something or in God, in someone or in God. I want for us to be people who are focused, who stay focused through this season of life. Through all of the challenges, all of the struggles, all of the disappointments, we stay focused on God, we trust God first and foremost. Let's pray. Father, again, I am, I am so impressed with you because you promised to meet our needs and you want us to trust you, to rely on you, to depend on you. And as we do, we find our needs getting met by you. You alone are God and you alone are, are able to meet all of our needs to fully, completely fill us with who you are to grant us salvation, to grant us strength, to help us through every challenge, every circumstance, every test we face. I pray that we would be men and women who put you first, who rely on you above everything else, who move you up that list so that you are our go-to. When we struggle, we go to you, not to these other things. I pray that we would do that in doing that, I pray that you are pleased. I pray that you'd bless everyone in here as they put you first in their life. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen.